So hi everybody, and, and thanks Jen for that uh, very kind introduction. And uh, Jen and I worked together for several years on on a remote project, so it's kind of fitting that she's introducing me here and I give this little talk. Real quick, I will say this is kind of a tried to get it to around 20 minutes, but it might end a little bit soon. So um, hopefully that's a, a good thing, and you guys can get a coffee if I a lot of 20 minutes and through and, and see where we get. Jen mentioned I'm, I'm at Envision. A lot of you are probably familiar with Envision, the prototyping and, and collaboration platform. And I'm part of a very small and, and relatively new team called Design Education. Part of our mission is to create content that helps to establish best practices maybe struggling a little bit to establish good design practice. Uh, my boss, Aaron Walter, some of you may know, he spent a long time at MailChimp. He established the UX practice there, education. He also has a background at the uh, Art Institute. Um, as Jen mentioned, I, I have a background both in product design, uh, hardware, and software. And also in education, I've been teaching at the, the Stanford last four years. Uh, I teach the capstone class there, take a product basically from idea to market, ideally by the end of the year, and on and create companies from the products, although exception rather than the rule. So I, I have a lot of experience with remote work. I've largely been remote. Six uh, and Envision is a is a fully distributed company. It's probably the largest company of I'm remote, and and it's been just a fantastic experience. And so, since I've been doing this for a while, I've uh, put a fair bit of thought into impacts of working remotely, both on on the the planet and around us. And so, a few of those things here today. I think you could kind of the, the benefits, the sustainable benefits of working remotely into three things, food, or sorry, fuel and fitness things. I'm, I'm sure that there's been a, a lot of definitions of sustainability highlighted today already. A little tweak because I think of, of being able to have a sustainable lifestyle uh, when it regards you know, a small carbon footprint, positive impact on your lifestyle over time. I think we're all willing to make sacrifices, but for a lot of these practices to stick with us and to have a, a positive impact on our life and colleagues and our families, work does a lot of these things and this. Fuel. And Walter, uh, he's my boss at Envision, he's a great guy. He's based out in Georgia and Athens, and he's been commuting uh, from Athens into Atlanta. And he did a calculation that during that time, he's actually the circumference of the Earth. 272 days in the car so you can only imagine that the carbon footprint that that entails and that's extreme example but just the average commute it's about a 30 mile commute round trip 22 miles per gallon you're looking at 4.3 tons of carbon per year uh, emitted so that's, that's not insignificant It's not only the, the direct impact of driving your car day to day to work, it's also there's an indirect impact if you take cars off the road because uh, traffic congestion contributes about 56 million pounds, sorry, of CO2 to the atmosphere. This is from uh, 2011. I was just trying to hide that thing at the bottom. 
One second, sorry. Um, the the reduction in commuting and taking cars off the road. There's also this lifestyle element to it. Ernest, who's uh, for us, sums it up pretty well here. He's got a 10 minute round trip to take his daughter to daycare. That's it. He's got less stress. Get up in the morning, manages time. He doesn't have to race to beat traffic. I really agree with this. Um, in the last place that we lived, I was actually able to at the school, my shoulders, and just spending that time with her, not having to be in the car, is just an impact on, on your lifestyle. To food. So the remote work isn't always glamorous, and there's this great little satire recently in the New Yorker uh, where somebody calls in, Robert calls into a 911 operator <laughs> and his emergency is that he works from home. He goes through a kind of litany of things that are going wrong from still being dressed in his pajamas to not remembering if he showered. But uh, I thought one of the funnier bits was talking about what he's eaten and he goes through all these various bizarre concoctions that he's eaten throughout the day. <laughs> um, so, Eating from uh, eating from home as a remote worker has its challenges, but I think it's also got uh, the opportunity to make some really um, in regards to sustainability. And this has a big impact. If you look at industrial or agriculture and the contribution, um, there's a lot of different estimates ranging from 20 to 33 percent can be attributed to industrial agriculture. Also has you're looking at 3.3 billion tons of CO2 contributed worldwide, just from just from wasted food. So I think by by working from home, you really have an opportunity. Obviously, you can cook leftovers, um, which is great. You can make healthier choices. You can foods and kind of control the types of foods that you buy that aren't contributing to uh, industrial agri agriculture. And there's also kind of innovative services or products and services like uh, Shakti, our social media marketing manager, uses something called imperfect produce. It's rejected produce and sells them at a discounted price. And that, that impacts uh, the food waste statistic that we just touched on. So again, the, the lifestyle component of this, it helps uh, not only with sustainability, but uh, Angela here mentions that he, she used to eat five to 10 times per week, five to 10 times per week. Now she's got it down to one to two. She's saving money year, eating at her desk, I'm guilty of as well. Let's talk about fitness. Uh, the connection here may at first seem a little bit more tenuous, but if you look at the statistics around waste and the impact on our landfills, there's one pretty staggering one that per year we have 7.5 billion needles and syringes that ended up in landfills. And this is outside of the healthcare system. Um, and this medical waste comes from, you know, all, all types of times as things like diabetes and other potentially preventable diseases that can be attributed to our, to our lifestyle and um, our lack of fitness. So that's another thing that remote work really frees you up to do. If you're not spending those hours in the car, you can instead use that time to get out and exercise. Dennis here again um, talks about being able to spend time with his wife and also sync up schedules to go exercise with her. 
I often do the same thing with my wife who also works from home. We got friends together. Just it's having that flexibility side and uh, well, I think lifestyle benefit. And then then it's also preventing potential diseases that can have a, a pretty big Here's Aaron again to me how much he really enjoys getting on his bike to school. And again, that's the family and also getting out and, and getting some exercise. You know, for me, it really boils down to, to two things. I think, you know, the, the won't work to really let you spend more time, more quality time with your family, lead a healthier lifestyle. And the fact that, that doing these things also has a positive impact is, is just fantastic. So for remote work, um, hopefully the kind of work we do allows for it. And I'm hoping over time, more and more people are able to access this type of work because I think in a lot of ways for, for your families and a healthier planet. And I know that was that was pretty brief, so I added a little that's a little bit of a pivot, maybe even well, I hope, though I hope not out to the end. Um, just something that I've thought about over the years that's related to and um, our the warming of our planet. It's also something that's really close to close to heart for me, and it goes back to kind of our impact on the world directly. The relationship between focus on climate change and our focus on on conservation. I spent about four years in graduate school studying marine biology and marine science. Along with that, studied a little bit of climatology and behind me, but I there, there are some striking things that still stick with me. And if you look at the the history of the Earth, it's uh, geologically speaking, it's it's fluctuated in temperature quite a bit over the years. If you look back 750 million years ago, there was ice almost from pole to pole, and something called S Snowball Earth. Um, ice cover actually was a factor in the the big explosion the evolutionary explosion of 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 life at the time the cambrian period it's just some interesting the cold climate change in this case for about 100 million years ago it was sort of flipped and was almost ice free and um you know, but a greenhouse earth effect where there are even forests in Antarctica sort of roamed around. This is a friend of mine, great troll who does some great stuff. And so things um about the adaptability of life on this planet. And the truth is I think that we have we're gonna have the choice to make on the fact that we have on the planet and um solve that problem but like even if we don't life is going to go on and we might not be there to enjoy it and i think that's that's um impact to me is is the meaning that has on us as as people in that relationship between us as people and our nature i'm probably doing a, kind of a poor job of summing this up but there was a really great article by Jonathan Franzen in April 2015. And he, in between um, on climate change and a focus on conservation, it, it is that it's, it's not enough to just focus on, climate, on our carbon emissions. We also have to keep a lot of, in this case, he's talking about birds, but wild birds alive right now. Is that um, 
grim perspective, but the animals may not be able to thank us for allowing them to live. And they certainly wouldn't do the same thing for us if our positions were reversed, but it's we, not they. Meaning. And for me, I, on family and friends, my, my connection to nature is probably one of the things that brings most meaning to my life. And in a prior career, I was uh, an underwater photographer and I ran an underwater photography magazine. So I spent a lot of time in the water uh, with big animals and just being in their presence and knowing that they've been around the, the dinosaurs were 100 million years ago is just a source of constant awe for me. Shark and, and uh, these animals that have been around for hundreds of millions of years impact on them from in fishery, which is wiping them out much faster than any could potentially. And, and certainly climate change can have an effect, uh, the acidification of the oceans, consequence on all, all the life in the ocean. But I think things that have an impact are also worth focusing on. Um, these are uh, tiger sharks and lemon sharks in the Bahamas. So I'll say that um, I think, you know, we have this real uh, challenge and opportunity before us. There's this global challenge of climate change. There are also smaller and maybe more local, although some of these problems are worldwide challenges of conservation where have the most immediate impact, but their impacts from habitat degradation or overfishing. I just encourage us to all think about how we can to these causes. Um, sharks obviously have a special place in my heart, so I'm a contributor to Wild Aid, which is a big effort against shark finning. And uh, I think that you can impact locally in the short term, in addition to all the sustainable things that we can think about. Uh, uh, with regards to, to climate change, having that balance, I think, is a pretty important thing to think about. So I realized that last bit was maybe a little bit of off topic, but I feel, I feel like it related, hopefully, to the talk overall. Time, uh, you've had to stories here. Um, if you ever want to reach out, you can reach out to me on Twitter. I'm at eWoolery, uh, organizers of this conference, and me i think it's a really great new tradition that you guys have here and you carry it 